Hello aviators! Our Brazil tour continues today. We have already looked at the old exhibits of the Embraer Museum, and now we can finally meet the main project of this company. One of the most awaited aircrafts and an heir to the glorious conquerors of the industry. Embraer E-Jet E2, the second generation of a successful family of regional passenger aircrafts, developed by the Brazilian Embraer conglomerate. The updated family is represented by three models, E-175, E-190 and E-195, that in their names will proudly carry the additional index E-2. Aircrafts represent a deep modernization of the basic family, with the installation of new engines, avionics and the revision of a number of structural elements. The liners have already started to go to the airline parks. Since we're talking about modern planes, their history begins quite recently. In the mid-2000s, the Canadian concern Bombardier launched a development program of the new generation of airliners, which we now know as the Bombardier C-Series. It should have been the single-aisle aircrafts created from scratch using the most advanced technologies, with a capacity of 110 to 135 seats, and over time this range grew even more, to the interval of 108 to 160 seats. Looking at those figures, it becomes clear that the aircrafts were not planned to simply become a replacement for the aging CRJ airliners. No, the Canadians announced their claim to a more serious market. The bigger models of the C-Series have already attacked the big guys, such as Boeing 737 MAX 7 and Airbus A319. Yes, those models are the youngest in the lines of aviation giants, but nevertheless. As further history showed, the game was much more difficult for Bombardier and much more interesting for us. Embraer, of course, could not ignore such a large-scale project of its main competitor. The situation was rather complicated. On one hand, fuel costs at the time were breaking records, which had a very bad effect on market demand on small jetliners. Airlines preferred turboprop models. In this situation, Bombardier's idea to increase the capacity of its new aircrafts was quite logical. Embraer had many reasons to think about it. Firstly, yes, the demand for small regional planes suffered from high fuel prices. But airplanes are not created in a day. And who can guarantee that the oil prices will not go down? As we already know, they very much did. Secondly, Bombardier had old aircrafts, which had to be changed to completely new ones. But the Embraer planes are almost new, and replacing them with brand new models seemed like a total waste. And the third thing. Increasing the dimensions of the aircraft and making it more technically advanced is of course good. Just look at the C-Series, it's awesome. But messing with Boeing and Airbus is a risky business. And while the Canadians decided to take that risk, the Brazilians preferred to thread more carefully. It was decided not to start a completely new program, but instead to carry out a deep modernization of the E-Jet family. Embraer officially announced this works in 2011, at the Dubai Air Show. With a planned capacity of 88 to 132 seats in a single class configuration, the new planes retained most of the original jet market and competed with the little CS100 model. E-Jets will not touch the market of the industrial giants. The project development continued for several years and was very intense. In February 2016, the first E190E2 prototype passed the rollout ceremony, and in May it made its maiden flight. A month and a half later, this aircraft was introduced for the first time to the public at the Farnborough Air Show. By the summer of 2017, five aircrafts participated in the test program, four E190s and one senior E195. This group spent 2,000 hours in the sky, confirming all, even seemingly too optimistic expectations. Fuel efficiency increased by 16% compared to the basic E-Jet liners. And this, in turn, allowed to increase the range with a similar capacity of the fuel tanks. In early March 2018, as part of a special ceremony at the Embraer headquarters in São José das Campos, the E-190E2 received type certificates from the Brazilian, European and US aviation authorities. In the spring of 2018, 
Embraer started to deliver the first E-2 aircrafts to the first customers from Scandinavia, China and Kazakhstan. I have to note that although Embraer does not strive to increase the dimensions of its airliners, it still takes steps in this direction. The first plane to be developed was the basic E-190, although in the past it was considered a bigger model. Later, in 2019, the E-195 will follow. The junior E-175 airliners, which used to be favorites, will only appear in 2020 or 2021. And the very first E-Jet E-170 is not planned at all. The E-2 generation aircrafts are based on the design of the first generation E-Jets. However, they have many large and minor changes. The biggest change in the airframe is the revision of the wing design. With the replacement of some of the elements with composite ones, the installation of new pylons, new popular raked wingtips, and a better mechanization. The wing was also slightly moved to shift the aircraft's center of gravity. Those games with centering allowed to reduce the area of the horizontal tail, which combined with using new materials reduced the mass and improved aerodynamics. The avionics received a new and more effective fly-by-wire control system, with much more advanced automation, as well as the significantly modified cockpit. The main change in the planes, of course, is the re-engining. The E-2 airliners received new Pratt Whitney PW-1700G and PW-1900G engines, depending on the modification of the aircraft. These engines are part of the PW-1000G family, different versions of which are installed on the A320neo, MC-21, C-series and MRJ families. These engines, of course, are much larger than their predecessors, and Embraer has faced the same problems as the rest of the aircraft manufacturers, replacing the engines of their planes. The space under the wing had to be enlarged. On this purpose, higher pylons were developed, modified wing was lifted, and the whole plane rose due to the higher landing gear. And something else about that landing gear. On the old E-Jet, you could notice that the main undercarriage is not closing completely, leaving the wheels in sight. We can see something like that on the Boeing 737. Minus to aerodynamics, plus to the economy of mass and simplified mechanism. However, the increase in size and speed of the flights has displaced this balance in favor of the requirements for the airframe purity. So the E-2 airliners have full shutters that cover the gears completely. All these changes have allowed to reduce fuel consumption by 16% in comparison to the models of the first generation. 11% of them account for the new engines, 3.5% for improving the aerodynamics of the airframe, and 1.5% for a new, more efficient avionics. The widths of the fuselage and cabin did not change. The E-2 airliners received slightly modified, but mostly the same fuselages as their predecessors. And they will have to compete with newer planes, with often wider fuselages. Being limited in space, the engineers went to different tricks to ensure the sufficiently high level of comfort. The plane received the new cabin design, made with the use of the newest technologies. New air conditioning, a new onboard entertainment system, new maintenance equipment, kitchens, lavatories and so on. In addition, with the preservation of the classic layout, four seats in a row in an economy class and three seats in a row in a business class, a special optional scheme for arranging business class seats was developed. The seats in this arrangement are placed with a small indent from a single line of the rolls. This scheme slightly increases the required length of the cabin, but gives the passenger extra space on the sides. Something similar in principle is already being used in business classes of uh, larger airliners, but it is an innovation for the original transportations. The guys from Embraer are very proud of this idea. How will it show itself in practice? Time will tell. As I said previously, it is planned to release three versions. Well, it is planned for now. Who knows what else they'll come up with. So, E190 E2. Basic modification which gets to fly first. The length of the aircraft is 36.2 meters, and the cabin accommodates 97 passengers in a two-class configuration and 106 in a single class. The aircraft is equipped with bigger versions of the PW-1900G with thrust of up to 85 kN each, 
and is capable of flying on a distance of up to 5186 kilometers. Maximum range in the family. E195 E2, older brother, which is an enhanced version of the E190. The fuselage is extended by 5.3 meters and the wingspan by 1.4 meters, mainly due to the installation of larger wingtips. These modifications allow to accommodate up to 120 passengers in a two-class configuration and 132 in a single class. The aircraft is equipped with the most powerful versions of PW1900G engines, with thrust up to 102 kN each, and is capable of flying on a distance of up to 3704 km. The E195E2 airliners are completing the tests and will probably start deliveries in 2019. They will compete with the C-Series Junior models, CS100, E175E2, the youngest brother in the E2 family. This time the fuselage was shortened by 3.8 meters, and the wing was also cut by 2.7 meters. Yes, minus 2.7 from the total wingspan. Don't think that they sawed the plane completely. The airliner cabin accommodates 80 passengers in a two-class configuration and 88 in a single-class configuration. The power plant will include junior versions of PW1700G engines, gaining up to 67 kN each. The 175th will fly on a distance of up to 3815 km. It is now in development, its first deliveries are planned for 2021. For the production of the new generation of airliners, Embraer conducted a significant modernization of the factory. It is assumed that the production will reach the rate of 8 aircrafts per month by the end of 2018. At the same time, Embraer will continue the assembly of the first generation airliners to realize the portfolio of orders for those planes. The production of the first generation E-Jets will be completed by the beginning of the 2020s, when the serial production of the E-175 E2 models will begin. At the beginning of spring 2018, Embraer has a portfolio of firm orders for 228 aircrafts from 7 airlines, 100 E-175s, 63 E-190s and 65 E-195s. Plus, the portfolio of orders contains options for about 200 more units. This is it for today, guys. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Fast flights and soft landings to you.